Okay, this is the long overdue review of my epically awesome Frank Fisher battle. And, um, well, let's just say I have a feeling that my, uh, my camera facilities are not going to do this, this knife justice. But we'll see what we can do. So, I recently had the good fortune, I was out in America just over a week ago teaching uh, Chinese yoga or Qigong, if you've ever heard of that. And um, I thought, okay, well, Washington DC is considerably closer to Tampa, Florida than Devon is. So I thought I'd combine teaching and going to see Frank to pick up my battle. And Frank very generously said, yep, no worries, come along. So I did. And um, let's just say, I learned a stack from Frank. I'm hoping to make my own knives, starting with friction folders. And uh, the reason why this video is so overdue is because I'm currently converting my my garage into a workshop stroke office. So, like, yeah, Frank is one hell of a guy, incredibly generous with his knowledge and uh, just really humble, you know, really, really nice guy. And, okay, so as you can see, my battle is made from Boomerang Mokutai, I think, I have no idea to be honest, I could be wrong, but I guess you can see kind of the boomerang shape there. With Mother in Pearl, in Pearl Inlay with uh, Hidden Hardware, that's on the presentation side, and then on the other side, Frame Lock in full, let's call it Mokutai. And, uh, I don't know, I can just stare at this knife for ages and just keep seeing new wonderful things in it, like I don't know if my camera's going to pick it up No. In the centre of the pivot there's Mocha, um, Mother of Pearl in there as well Okay, so Let's open her up <laughs> Performance anxiety, what can I say? There we go. Okay, so it's obviously got that wonderful recurve hawk bill or inverse tanto with the harpoon on top and um, just I think it's the most awesome grind in the business and um, yeah, stunning. Incredibly sharp, as tested on the hairs on Frank's arms. And so it's a 3.75 inch blade. And on the back spacer, I don't know if you can see, but it goes from blue to purple. I do apologize, guys. Um, I spend all my money on knives and not camera equipment. So I wish I could show you this in glorious HD, but I can't. And um, let's see if you can have a look inside. So inside you can see the screws for the hidden hardware and with a bit of luck over here you can see Frank Fisher's Maker's Mark using his uh, signature for a change instead of block capitals and you'll also notice there's quite a super early lockup and Frank explained that that's needed because this material doesn't have the same springy factor that um, titanium has but don't worry it was given the the famous Frank Fisher 
spine whack on his wooden stool that gave me quite a shock because I wasn't ready for it and um, the lock didn't fail but I t <laughs> tell you what did fail I was sat, we were sat chewing the breeze, shooting the fat <laughs> in, uh, in Frank's house and obviously I was sat there playing with my new toy and I hadn't noticed it, Frank noticed it straight away, he said hang on that doesn't sound right, he says the D10 balls come out and I looked down and lo and behold he was correct the D10 ball had come out whilst I was flipping and uh, thank heavens it came out whilst I was there and not whilst I was back in the UK so that's a ceramic detent ball and the great thing about that is it meant that I got to see the knife being taken apart and put back together again and I learned that just because everything fit perfectly when you took it apart doesn't mean it's all going to fit perfectly when you put it back together again and um, yeah, like I said, it was just an educate. It was an education seeing inside uh, Frank's workshop, and it was an education being able to talk to Frank about knives. And um, like I said, the guy's incredibly humble. And um, yeah, what really did freak me out though, uh, I met up with his brother Todd Junior in the evening. We went out for a meal and they took me for fish and chips, something which as Brits are supposedly uh, do quite well but I, I, I'll i be honest, I can't remember where they took me but their fish and chips were uh, superior to the ones that I got back at home so that was um, very kind of them uh, I mean it's just such a gorgeous piece of art there's no visual speed bumps you know, it's like, you know that wonderful feeling of running your fingers over velvet? Well, this is like running your eyes over velvet. As Frank would put it, there's no visual speed bumps. And... Right, pretty much I've said all I want to say about it. And... This is the... The pinnacle of my collection and now that I've discovered that I actually enjoy making knives more than I enjoy collecting them I can't see that I'm going to be acquiring anything like this again which is just as well my aim with this is I want it to be an heirloom piece that I hand down to my son and that he hands down to his son and so on and so forth anyway I hope you've enjoyed looking at my Frank Fisher battle and um, if you ever get the chance to, to chat with Frank or even better to own a piece of his artwork then um, I suggest you do. Anyway, thank you for watching and bye for now.